spinal muscular atrophy. Um, it's in the muscular dystrophy family. And basically what that does is the older I get, the weaker my muscles get due to a deficiency in one of the survival motor neurons um, in my body. So it affects all the muscles in my entire body. It's not just my legs, it's not just my arms, it's all the muscles in my body. So I can still feel everything, I can still move everything. Uh, it's just atrophy, which means weakened, right? Um, and I really didn't feel the shift until I was high, in, in high school. That's when I really started to feel the shift take place. That's when it started to get more difficult, you know, just sitting and standing, going up and down the stairs, getting dressed on my own. Just, you know, anything that was going against gravity started to get a little bit difficult for me. Um, you know, and the doctor said that by the age of 15, I would end up in a wheelchair, and uh, they weren't even expecting me to live past my teenage years. But here I am, guys, still kicking life's butt. I just celebrated my 43rd birthday. I'm 43, I'm baby, come on. That's right, baby, 43 years young. And uh, I'm excited, man, I'm excited, you know, because uh, according to what the doctor said, I wasn't supposed to be here, but you know, you and I are both men of faith, and uh, we know that we believe in a greater doctor, the great physician, Jehovah Rapha, and uh, he has a bigger plan for my life uh, and uh, bigger ways, right? And that's why I'm still here. That's why you're still here. That's why me and you vibe so good together, man, because we know what it is to struggle and overcome adversity and challenges and, 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 and be told that, you know, we don't have a long time to be here. And uh, we didn't accept that, you know, we didn't accept that. We had a different mindset. We have warrior attitude. We have warriors inside of us that rose up to the occasion. And uh, I know we're gonna get into that a little bit, but I wanna let everybody know that's going through this coronavirus crisis, that you need to just build that warrior spirit inside you and know that this too is gonna pass and you're gonna get through this. We're gonna Amen. Get it together. Well, you know, when I talk to people about, you know, what God did in my life to make a, a physically man weak to become spiritually strong is basically a definition of your life. You have become so spiritually strong, your life totally changed. How many years now has it been that you have li been living in a wheelchair? Uh, this year makes 20 years. 20 years. So for me, I've, li I've always said I've been living a bonus life for the last 13 years, right? And you've been living a bonus life for the last 20 years. Now the difference between Jose and me is that Jose has an amazing wife, amazing kids, so he's literally lived a full life. I haven't gotten there. I got, you know, I'm still 13 years of my bonus life, so I still got to get the wife and the kids. But I would say this, Jose, that you inspire me a lot, even when we don't talk. I want you to know that your book is, is in my shelf. Your 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 story is always in my heart, and my I always pray for you to for God to use you in a miraculous way because there is a miracle every time you step on stage or every time you meet somebody. There's a miracle now. Because of the short time on this, I want to make sure that I touch base on a couple things. How has your life changed? I mean, you're someone that travels. You know, you're someone that's in front of people. You're someone that, like me, we have all these amazing events that we have going on. How has your life changed? Um, and your family's life, I mean, now, probably for your wife, it might be even better because she gets this one-on-one -on -one time with you more often because you guys are now you know together all the time compared to you traveling and having deadlines but how's your life changed yeah man you know it's been it's been difficult because you know everything that we have going on on my end is it has been canceled you know what i mean Me too. so uh one of the ways that i've been able to stay afloat thank god that i still have a one-on-one -on -one coaching clients that i that I uh, work with. I also have a, a book writing master class. A lot of people have taken advantage of this time to write their books. So I have a few clients with that as well. And that's been able to help me out. But, um, you know, and uh, then our kids, they're going crazy. <laughs> you know, they can't go out too much. And neither can we, you know, we go out to walk the dog and then we're back in. We go out to walk around the block and then we're back in. So it's a little crazy. I think, you know, it's affected everybody uh, from, you know, some people are getting cabin fever, you know, me and you were outgoing people, so we're always out and about, we're traveling, we love being around people, so the fact that, you know, we're kind of stuck at home is a little bummer, uh, but that's why I'm enjoying these Zoom calls, man, and, and, and these Nevo calls, I'm so glad that there's so many people out there that are staying connected, that are not isolating themselves, 
And uh, thank God for Zoom and Skype and things like that, WhatsApp and Facebook Live and all the Instagram Live. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in, by the way. But thank God for all of that, man, because that's how, you know, we're able to stay connected. And I just love seeing how people are really, you know, using this time and their gifts to give back. And they're going on on lives and and, and, and doing these these videos and encouraging and inspiring and motivating, motivating people and giving people tools and resources and things like that. So it's super cool, man. But yeah, man, you know, I'm just waiting for this thing to pass so that I can get back at it and, and, and impact as many lives as I can. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jose talks about, um, you know, social. Um, I'm, I'm, if you know me, you know I'm very social. I'm, I am a hugger. I am a handshaker. I'm a, I, you know, kiss and hugs and, you know, all that stuff. So for me, is extremely, extremely something that it literally took me back, Jose. And I don't know if this is taking you back to when you when you first started to to notice your weakness. But for me, it took me back to my cancer days, man. It took me back to 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 laying in a bed and not be able to move. It took me back to not be able to leave the apartment because of my immune system. It took me back to a lot, a lot, a lot of weakness. Uh, from from a from mental point of view to physical point of view to even spirituality and 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 God was showing me so uh, this has been a progress for me um, a process for me in a way of you know God taking me back to to what He did in my life to show me that even at my worst time He was already planning something for my life He was already doing something through me at that moment. I could not leave the apartment. I could not do anything. Everybody had to clean everything around me because my immune system was so weak. So it took me back to that isolation time that I had with him, that one time with him. And I tell you, man, it was something very surreal to a degree because I had to literally go back and, and, and think about how much God did in my life. How many people did God move through that period of my life? You know, yeah. so so I think about you and, you know, like we we are people of faith. So we know that we're going to face this 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 fear and we're going to face all this uh, this challenges. And we are already planning our next life or our next season. But there's a lot of people, Jose, that don't have that. There's a lot of people that don't know what it is to feel the way we do. They've never gone through the challenges like we have. Um, you know, for me, it was being told I was going to die multiple times. For you is being told that you're not going to survive this. Uh, so what what would you say to people? I know we're doing all these amazing uh, technological advances and we're able to talk to people and reach people in so many variables. What, what would you say right now to give ounces of hope to people that they don't think like, there's people that can't even get out of bed right now. There's people that are not even getting out of bed. They don't even know what it is they want, you know? Yeah, man, you know, I just tell them, you know, we all go through a lot of things. Everybody has different situations, different circumstances. And, you know, one circumstance is, one circumstances are worse than another, right? Because everybody deals with things differently. But one of the things for me when I was growing up, you know, I, I, always, I was always focusing on the things that I couldn't do. I can't run. I can't stand. I can't lift my arms above my head. I can't hug my loved ones. I can't bend over inside my shoes. I can't put my own pants on. You know, I was always focusing on the can't do's in my life. And it wasn't until I really shifted that mindset and said, okay, listen, Jose, we already know what you can't do. Let's start focusing on what you can do. And that's when my life changed, bro, because I said, okay, when I can't do all these things, well, what can I do? And I said, well, you know what? I still have a sound mind that I can use to think creatively and I still have it positively. And I still have a voice. I still have my voice that I can use. There's so many people that are uh, out there that, are focusing on the wrong things, man. They're focusing on the wrong things. And that's okay, you know, because I'm not judging, right? Because I can't, I, I've taken things for granted myself in life um, until I couldn't do it anymore. But you don't want to wait until you can't do it anymore or you're forced to not be able to do something anymore. You want to wake up every morning with an attitude of gratitude. That's worked for me my whole life after I've made the, sh- the, the shifting and the change. Right, I wake up and I'm grateful that I can breathe on my own. There's people right now sitting in hospitals and even makeshift hospitals that are dying from this coronavirus because they cannot breathe on their own. And there's not enough ventilators out there to help these people. So those those people that don't have them are dying faster than the ones that have them. And so every day that I wake up, man, even during this, I'm grateful that I can just take a deep breath on my own. Amen. 
You know, grateful is the, is the one word, uh, you know, I, I always say I'm grateful that I'm able to walk, I'm able to talk, to breathe. I've been on a ventilator, I know what it is to do oxygen. Uh, when I went through chemo and I went through my surgery, how to get back my, my oxygen levels, I had to do all these exercises, so I know about all that. And I tell you, I do, I am grateful. I look, I call my mom and I'm like, listen mom, we're alive, we're healthy, let's just pray and wait for God to reveal the reason and the purpose for everything, but we have to stay, you know, um, grateful. Absolutely, that is the one yeah. thing. Absolutely. You know, I, went, I was outside today, you know, trying to get some fresh air. I saw one of my neighbors passing by, and he stopped, you know, like ten feet away, right? But he was like, "Man, every time I see you, brother, you always got a smile on your face." And I said, "You know why, man? Because I'm still alive." And there's so many people that are living, but they're not alive, man. Yeah. And I am alive, brother. And he was telling me about how he had a cousin who was also in a wheelchair, who, who is also in a wheelchair, but he's paralyzed from the neck down from birth because the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck oh, wow. and it caused like some type of brain injury where it's almost like his bottom from his neck down is like in a vegetable state. And uh, that right there to me, when I hear stuff like that, you know, when I'm having my bad days, I'm like, well, man, at least I can turn my neck and at least I can move a little bit. You know what I mean? And I'm just grateful for the things that I can't do now, man. And that's what I focus on. That's what I try to strengthen. And that's what I try to use to keep moving forward and uplift other people, man. Amen. Well, listen, I know we don't, we're don't. doing these little quick, little one, very, very short interviews. I'm going to put it on IGTV, uh, the 10 minutes of this. And I will say Jose Inspires on, on IG, on, on Instagram, on Facebook. Just go to Jose Flores, uh, the Mind Disruptor. Uh, you know, he's got a book out. He's got a course out. He's got a lot of things, a lot of tools that a lot of you can actually use during these moments. So I would, I would basically, uh, I'm, I'm, listen, I will always confirm and affirm who Jose Flores is. And listen, let's talk about doing something else. I've been praying with a few of my friends about doing a mastermind or doing something on Zoom where we could do for people, even if it's a, a one hour or something like that. Let's pray about that. Let's see what, what God can reveal for us, Jose, because anything that Absolutely. I could do with you, I will do. And uh, right now we have to do these uh, next two, three weeks, whatever the time is. Uh, we're not stopping. So I pray that you at home are not stopping either. Again, this is Life Changes for Life. I am the host, David Octavio Gandel, and I am with the mind disruptor, Jose Flores, Mr. Inspire. God bless you, my friend. Till next time. Take care. Thank you so much. God bless you.